Hello and welcome to this video. So we're ready now to get started with the good stuff, which is actually using the OANDA API from Python. I'm starting from the project where we left off in the last video with a couple of changes. That main change being that we've got a new file called defs.py in the root. Please make this file and we've got some definitions in here. So if you're brand new to Python, the learning curve is steep, I know, but bear with me. So we've made something here called API key. It's a variable. Imagine it's a box that stores some information. And we're setting that equal to a string, a load of characters between speech marks, except in this case, the string is XXX. Please replace these four X's with your API key. Your API key should be kept secure. And I've already revoked mine from the previous videos because everybody could see it and got myself another one. Please also replace these four X's with your account ID. And you'll see that we've got a third variable here or box with information, let's say, called OANDA URL. And this is the API endpoint that we've seen already in a previous video when we used Postman for the OANDA API. This should be, even if you're brand new, fairly self-explanatory. Whenever you use these in another file, they'll be substituted by their definitions here. And that means that we don't have to type this out again and again. And if anything ever changes, we only have to change it in one place. Then we've got something a little bit more confusing if you're new to Python down here called secure header and then something that looks a little bit odd. Now you remember with JSON we had an object defined by these curly braces and we had keys and values. We well, can do exactly the same thing inside Python. The difference being is you don't need to have the double speech marks like you do in JSON. You can have single speech marks as well or you could make something else called a dictionary which we'll, which we'll come to. So defining another box called secure header here, so another variable, and that's storing inside it this object. And this object has the key authorization, and then it has this funny looking thing here. So what's this? Well, this is just a string like up here, except it's a formatted string denoted by the F before the opening speech mark here. And then we've got bearer space, and then some squiggly brackets. Now they are what's known as a placeholder. And what will happen is whatever's inside these squiggly brackets will be filled in as a string inside this placeholder. So we're taking this API key, which is four X's at the moment, but now should be yours. And this whole bit here will be replaced by the API key. So what we'll have is bearer space and then your API key. Now you remember when we were using Postman a few videos ago, we had the authorization key and the value was bearer and space and then our API key. We're doing exactly the same here. We're having a key as authorization and then we're having a value as bearer space and our API key. And this is a header that we're going to send with our request when we make our request using Python. So once all that's done, we can go into test.ipynb. You'll see when you click on it and open it that I've cleared everything off from the previous video and typed in import requests and import defs. And I've run that cell as well. Make sure, please, down the bottom that the virtual environment is being used here. Remember, we talked about this in the last video. You must be using the VNV, otherwise we're going to have, or you're going to have, a few problems with the following code. So we're going to start using the OANDA API. And to do that, we're going to use this requests that we've imported here. Python's great because it's short to write and there are libraries that do lots of heavy lifting for you and one of them is requests and we're going to make use of requests to make our HTTP requests like we did in Postman but via Python. To do that, if you read the OANDA documentation, I won't put it up here, but there's a section that recommends that you try and maintain what's known as a persistent connection. That means using a session. The reason is when you're making lots and lots of API requests, as may well happen with your bot, so let's say you're making 50 requests a second or something like this, it's a bad idea to be creating a brand new connection each time because that's a really heavy load for the server and it'll actually make your, your program quite slow as well. Requests has something called a session object attached to it. And again, you've never seen this before. Don't worry about it. Just know that we're going to make a session now and that will be something that will help maintain our persistent connection to the server. So I'm going to type session is equal to requests.session. So now we have a, an object. We're able to use this session object to make our API requests. And I would suggest we do the same request as we did in the previous videos with Postman. We try and get 10 candles out for the euro US dollar. Now, if you think back to the documentation there, we need to specify an instrument, uh, the number of candles as a count, and also our granularity. So let's type those out. We'll say that we're going to have an instrument and that can be equal to the euro US dollar as a string. Then on the next line, count is equal to 10. We want 10 candles. And on the next line, granularity is equal to a string, which is H1, because we want the one hour candles. Now, one thing to note here, if you're brand new to coding, this is a string. 
as we've said before, we've got these speech marks and some letters and stuff inside. This here is not a string, it's an integer, it's a number. It's a different type to this. And most programming languages revolve around different types of variables. What we want to do now is actually make the URL for accessing the OANDA API. So if I fire up the documentation here, just as a quick refresher, you remember that we need to go to forward slash instruments, put the actual instrument in that we're looking for forward slash candles. And then we need to send in some parameters. We need to send in the count, the granularity, and we're also going to send in the price because we're going to send in M, B and A. So we get the asks, the bids, and also the mid prices all together. So let's set up the URL. And to do this, we're going to use another placeholder string. So we're going to type URL is equal to F, open and close speech marks. And the first placeholder will be for defs.oanda URL forward slash instruments, forward slash, another placeholder, instrument, forward slash, candles, close speech marks. And then in an execute that cell, and in the cell below we can type URL, shift and enter, just to have a look at the URL. And you can see here that we've got the familiar from the Postman video URL up here for requesting our candles. Now I said we need to send in some parameters, so we need to make an object with keys and values to send these in. And the object we're going to make here is slightly different to what you may have seen before. Rather than use the squiggly brackets, we're going to use something called a dictionary inside Python. To all intents and purposes, they're the same. Dictionaries have a bit more functionality, which we'll see later in the course. But for me, the syntax is also a little bit easier to write because we're not bothering with all of the speech marks all over the place like we do with JSON. So we'll make our params, a new variable, is equal to dict, open and close curly brackets, and then we'll put the count, which is our key, is equal to our count, our variable, comma, and then our granularity, another key, is equal to the granularity, and then our price, another key, is equal to MBA. And we can actually print these uh, params, I wanted to write not param, down here, and we can see we have the familiar now object of keys and values of count 10, granularity H1, and price MBA. And all that's required now actually is to make our request to the OANDA API. To do that we're going to use a get request. Remember we have this get verb here in the documentation and we can use our session to do this. So we'll make a new, ob a new variable called response and set that equal to our session dot get because it's a get request and then we're going to send some information to this get request. So we're going to send the URL and then a comma we're going to send our parameters to tell it what parameters to send with the request. And then we're going to send our headers. Remember, we always need to send our secure header with our authorization. And believe it or not, shift and enter will now make the request to the OANDA API. So when you press shift, uh, shift and enter on that, you should have a number in here for what was executed. And now we can have a look at the status code of what has come back. If I go back to the documentation in OANDA, it says we should get a 200 response code here if the information has been successfully pro provided. Otherwise, we'll get one of these 400 errors. So back in our code, let's have a look at what response we got. We, we can type response.statusCode. And in my case, thank goodness, I have a 200. So now let's have a look at the actual information that's come back. The response comes back as JSON, and we can get this JSON from our response by doing dot JSON, open and close curly brackets. And when I hit shift and enter, you can see that I get an object as we've seen before, and we've got our instrument, our granularity, and as we saw before, we've got our candles inside here. And we've got the bid, the mid, and the asking prices, as a, along with the UTC time. So there we have it. A little bit of code, not very much at all. A lot of leverage in the background from Python allows us in a few lines to get some candles from the OENDA API. And again, I assume you've probably noticed just how fast this is. Now, one disclaimer I will say for people who are regularly programming and watching this video, of course, it's not ideal to do all of the requests in this manner inside a notebook. And later on in the course, we'll be refactoring the codes so that we have some proper classes and objects and scripts and stuff like that that do all of this work for us. But for now, we'll say it's the end of the video. In the next video, what we'll start doing is getting some candles from more than one instrument and trying to structure them in some kind of way. So thanks very much for watching. Questions and comments welcome as always. Otherwise, maybe see you in the next one.